Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and we craft and chit chat and we work on a project together. Uh, we're continuing on the uh, a uh, Krista Quilt's Charming Chevron Quilt right here. Uh, you can get the pattern. I have it available as a link here in my Facebook post. And if you're watching on the YouTube replay, it will be in the in the YouTube post as well. And uh, we are ultimately going to be making a whole pile of these chevron, chevron halves. So we got ones going to the right and ones going to the left and we'll ultimately put them together, but I'm gonna rearrange them in a whole bunch of different ways, so that's why I didn't uh, sew these together quite yet. But we are in the process of sewing all of them in one big long chain. We've gone down one side and now we flipped it around and going it down the other way, like 180 degrees and uh, doing the second sewing line. So we're gonna continue that tonight. I think we will finish that tonight and we will start snipping all the little threads. So we have to, everywhere this is connected, we'll have to snip that thread. And uh, I've concocted a little seam ripper and put it in the top of a spool. And that's what we're gonna use. Instead of a scissors, we're gonna just kind of snip them all uh, with, with that. So I've never done that before, but uh, someone mentioned it here and I've seen it before, but never had the need to do it really with all the, you know, I, I don't do the much big quilting projects, big chain stitching like this. So this will be a first for me. I'm pretty stoked to give it a try. So, but first we have to get through our sewing for the night and uh, I think we can do that. It'll be close, but I think we'll we'll get it done, which will be nice. This has been a lot of, lot of sewing here. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going tonight. Thanks again for joining me, everyone. All right, so here are the two piles again. So this is the done side. This is the side that we've gone on both sides of our diagonal line. And over here is our not done pile. Uh, it is a little bit smaller, so I think we'll still manage to get through it tonight, but let's get cracking on this right away. It is, it's just, yes, Gianna, it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> For all the uh, the quilts I've been doing lately, they've all been really specific with each block. Like each block is a different design, but with this quilt, it's a lot of the same, which I find really kind of relaxing. Where it's just like one simple block and you get to make that block over and over and over again. <laughs> but you're, you end up making a ton of the same thing. So that's why we have these two, two huge piles that we're sewing. But I think we'll finish this chain piecing tonight. And it's, uh, it's called uh, chain piecing because we're, we're keeping them all connected. So it's like one long chain of sewing and that it just saves time. I don't have to snip these apart every single time I'm, I'm done finishing it. I don't have lots of little threads everywhere. They're all connected. Makes it easy peasy. Oh, it's snowing there in Eastern North Carolina again. Oh my goodness. I saw some of those pictures from Alabama with, with all the snow. Just crazy town. I mean, it looks like the same amount of snow that, you know, we have here, which is just bizarre. I know it's crazy for uh, all y'all that don't have snow ever, but I don't know. I hope you enjoyed a little, just as a weird, a weird, uh, fun experience to have all the snow. And I know that is not always fun, but still. It's the cold. It's that, oh, you're ready for spring in, in the Bamas. Uh, I'm ready for spring here too. <laughs> there is something just so pretty about just white snow everywhere. 
Oh man, you pan- oh, the power went out for an hour. Okay, so that super blows in the winter. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not fun. Luckily, what's nice now with our, um, our gas fireplace that we just got put in, it's the kind that doesn't run on electricity. It, it has the pilot light going. And so even if the power goes out, we can still, we can still turn it on. And it's, it's battery operated for the remote to turn it on. So that makes me a little happy at least. We can have the fire going so there'll be a little light and a little heat. But yeah, that's a huge issue if the heat, if the electricity goes out when it's negative, you know, a million for a long time. Because then pipes can freeze and, you know, it, it gets cold so fast. You think your house would insulate a little bit better or, you know, or our house, maybe some other people's houses to keep them warm longer. But if we don't have the heat on, it gets cold real fast. Uh, it does not for, I mean, I've only had it happen like maybe once or twice, the power going out in winter. Uh, no, I don't think it's, I mean, I don't think it's that common by us. Usually when it happens, it's because um, it's because ice has gotten on the power lines and power lines are breaking because the ice is so heavy. But that is a really specific um weather thing that needs to happen for that like you know it needs to have been warm enough for things to turn to ice and then to freeze again or things to turn to like water and then freeze again but it's beautiful when that happens too actually you know like because then the trees are covered in ice and it's just glittering but it, it's really dangerous because it's really heavy and branches can fall and, and power lines can go down and stuff like that. Oh. <laughs> but we haven't had anything totally crazy here, here yet this year for winter. Oh, it's Thursday morning at 11.38 Thursday morning in Korea. I know it's a, well you're you're in the past so that's what I always find so funny is um all y'all in the other hemisphere it, it's always the future <laughs> so yeah you're you're uh, you're in the future which is kind of funny Alrighty, getting more slack here. We got started on the next round of colors. So we're working our way through there and I think maybe we have a few variations right at the end. Just because, remember, I, I didn't have fat quarters for everything. I had a few fat eighths. So we have some of those peppered in at the end here. But it'll be a little while before we get to that. I'm hoping we still have time to snip these tonight. But, you know, we're going to spend most of the time sewing still. Hopefully we don't have any bobbin runnings out like, like last time. These ones are fun with the little houses and stuff hiding in them. Oh, I, I had to ask you guys something tonight. So, uh, my friend showed me a photo today that her friend sent her. And it was for scented quilting fabric. So, have you guys heard of this at all? I have I have never heard of this, but she took a photo of it on the on the salvage or not the salvage, but the the end of the bolt where it has all the information. It said scented scented fabric or scented something, and she said it smelled kind of like fruity a little bit. So, it definitely was scented. I was going to look it up today. I think it was by Camelot 
fabrics or, or um, I don't think I'm getting quite that name quite right. Camelot something. But it clearly looked like it was intended to be scented fabric. And it was just a solid bright green, like the brightest green, just a solid. But we were thinking about it and it was like, first of all, scary. Like, what are they putting on this fabric to make it scented? And does it stay scented after a washing? Uh, and then what would you possibly use scented fabric for? Okay. And it's quilting fabric, right? It's not like stretchy jersey clothing, you know, like if you did some weird thing, like made a scented t-shirt or something for some weird thing, it, it seemed like quilting fabric. So what would you use scented quilting fabric for? The only thing I could possibly think of was like curtains or something, but this was a bright green fabric, like not really intended for curtains, I don't think. Yeah, definitely gimmicky. I'm, well, but then we got talking. So what if you're making a quilt out of a whole pile of different scented fabrics, right? Then you'd have all sorts of different scents going on. So you can make like recipes of scents depending on your, depending on your quilt design, you know? <laughs> so man, I don't know. I've never heard such a thing. Yeah, kids quilt, that would make sense. But still, like, ew. And you know, a lot of times, ooh, this one's really wrinkly. For kids stuff, a lot of times it's, has to have all this fire retardant stuff on to make it specifically for kids. So I don't think they'd ever say meant for kids, you know? Cause I, they probably can't legally do that without it being like fire, or fire retardant. Your mom needed every single grandchild great. Oh, doused in her blankets, in her perfume. How oh, interesting. <laughs> so maybe there is something to, to it somehow. Like little kids blankets. I was thinking maybe a stuffed animal toy or, or something, but still, I don't know. It's, it's, isn't it, I don't know, it just sounds Creepy. I'm just trying to think of like the chemicals that they put on this to make this smell. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Freaks me out. But when I started thinking about the idea of a quilt with where you have mixed fabrics and they all have different scents, that to me got like interesting. <laughs> you can make like a citrus quilt, you know, smelling quilt, or here's your lavender smelling quilt, but it's, but we put some of this fabric in, so it's lavender orange or something, you know, it's like how people put the different scents in their diffusers. <laughs> It'd be like a quilt version of that. But yeah, totally gimmicky for sure. <clears throat> but man, <laughs> it just, it caught me, got, Caught me off guard today, that idea. And so I had to, I had to bring it up to you, you guys and, and see what you thought of that. But yeah, what you said about, um, you know, spraying the blanket with perfume and stuff. I mean, that that makes sense. Like I can see that happening. So maybe, maybe a scented baby quilt isn't the total weirdest thing ever. <laughs> Oh man, I just, I like the idea of blending scents together. I think that's just a bizarre thought for fabric. <laughs> oh God, yeah, people with allergies, that just sounds like it'd be the worst. And again, you know, it's gotta be with some sort of crazy uh, chemical or whatever. It is Camelot and there are Oh, there's some that is peachy. Oh man. So have you, have you smelt it in real life before? Yeah, it was Camelot. I was going to look that up today. I was going to look them up and, and see what their range of scented fabrics is and what they look like and stuff. Pineapple and coconut. Oh man. See, I'm telling you, make a mixture of all of them to make a, you know, a blend, a blended smell. <laughs> Just so goofy. Uh, I'm a little twisted up here. I got tangled. All right, this one goes underneath. There we go, untangled. 
Oh, you just you just looked at it online. Oh man. <laughs> then if you packed away in a bit, oh, the other fabric would start to smell too. Yeah, I mean, man, I would never give it to anyone with allergies. I don't know. It it irks me. It, it, like it it freaks me out a little bit. I wonder how long this scent. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm kind of wondering, Gretchen. How long is that scent gonna last? My Tyquils. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm like all just tangled. I must have been grabbing at this all funny. Oh, it's something. Tonight it's getting all tangled up. There, maybe I'll just uh, try to reorganize it a little bit here. We're getting kind of towards the end. There, untangled a little. Gin and tonic quilts, there you go. <laughs> See, maybe there's something to it. But man, for weird. <laughs> Jeez, I feel like it's gonna be like the gin and tonic quilt and I, I, I feel like that's all gonna be on my brain for the next week. Like what kind of scented quilt could you, could you make? I'll have to uh, get the link and put the link in this post when I'm done here. Then we can then we can check out all the different flavors. <laughs> Man, I could you know like just thinking like a little kid. I I, I could see having, you know, my blankie and having my blankie have like that little coconut smell or something to it, you know? Just as your favorite thing and has a little smell to it. Thinking like that, I get it, but man, just thinking like, how do they do that? And I don't know, creeps me out. Do you think it's more for the quilter? Oh, well that's interesting. More for the quilter to enjoy while they quilt. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. It'd be something. It'd be an experience. <laughs> Maybe, oh god, peanut butter and jelly quilt. Oh man, I don't know. Ugh. But yeah, I could see that becoming a thing. <laughs> So she, she saw it, I don't think she bought any, but she saw it at SR Harris. That's that fabric store that, uh, that I've talked about here before. Um, just that big kind of giant warehouse that has like overstock fabric and it's crazy huge. She found it there in the quilting fabric section. So I don't know, next time I'm there, I'll have to have it in the back of my head and, and look for it. <laughs> we'll do a little, little tester. Oh man, oh that's so funny. Okay, blow those bath bombs. They smell like cotton candy. Oh my gosh! Oh, then it gave us a rash. You see, that's the thing, like, oils and, and you know, different scented chemical type stuff, like that, that's kind of creepy. Yeah, the whole room would smell of mixed aromas. Maybe that'd be a good thing, I don't know. <laughs> ah, it's just, it creeps me out a little bit, just like, thinking about yeah, the chemicals and, I don't know. But the possibilities, right? A whole new, a whole new, um, sense involved in, in sewing. <laughs> yeah, the quilts against the skin. See, it's the skin that's, that's what I'd be freaked out about with, with that touching skin. So weird. You learn something new every day. That's that's what I was thinking. I, you know, I learned something in the, even specifically in the crafting sewing world, something I never heard of, like every day almost. In the spring, they have stuffed animals that look like oh marshmallow bunnies that you can eat. Oh, and they're scented. Oh, they they're scented too. Hmm. So yeah, huh. 
So yeah, so I guess clearly kid stuff. That that makes sense. Kids blankets, kids toys. It was a bright smell of vision. It was a super bright green, like something that you would use in a kid's quill. I don't know where else you would use such a bright green. Just so funny though. Had me contemplating flavored quilts all all day today. Oh, hello, Patricia. Yes, I'm hoping to get these done tonight. So we we are done with the one side, and I'm getting awfully close to this other side. I don't think we'll finish it before nine, so we'll we'll still be we'll still be going at it, but like, I think we will finish it before, before the end here. I really, really, really want to clip them apart. If I can clip them all apart tonight, that means tomorrow we can cut all the diagonals and, and have our pairs. That'll be fun. Then we can sew it, not sew, we can um, press them, press them all up. All right, I'm still having like a tangled mass here. So let's, I was futzing with them maybe too much early on and they got all tangled or something or I was moving around too much. I don't know. If they got too tangled, I could just snip them. You know, I don't have to leave it in the giant chain. I could just snip the, the thread and keep sewing, but it's so neat to have that in one long giant chain. I'd be sad to, sad to break the chain. Man, I'm not sewing very straight at all tonight, but luckily, you know, they are half st square triangles, so I can fudge crooked lines a little bit when I press them. And uh, we will be trimming them down to size yet, too. So if they're not perfect right away, we'll be, we'll be trimming them. So it's not like a different block where I would have to make sure everything is sewn absolutely perfect with the perfect scant quarter-inch seam allowance. Otherwise, you know, nothing will fit together. I don't think we'll have that problem with, with this quilt, which is great. Which makes it even... Um, you know, better for a beginner. You know, if this is, if you haven't done a lot of quilts before, or this will be your first quilt using triangles or making half square triangles, that's what we're doing now. This will be a great quilt to do that on because I think it's going to be pretty forgiving. You know, lots of steps and everything still. Lots of, you know, we got to stick with each step all the way through. Lots of pieces. But I think there's... There's a lot of room to practice and improve and and uh, make mistakes with it still looking good. Yeah, I think it's great for beginners or just great if you want to zen out. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Patricia. I love these projects, though, like this, where it is the same thing and you can just relax and do it. Haven't had a project like this lately, so it's nice. We're getting there. I think we only have maybe 25 or so left, so it's going a little faster than I thought uh, it would tonight. My pile was a little smaller than I, than I thought. Although those are famous last words, maybe there's more hiding, uh, hiding off the edge here. <laughs> really piling up behind the machine though. Design while the hubs couldn't understand the content of- oh! Yeah, I mean, I, I would- I tried making a design wall, but I just- I don't have room for it anywhere. All our- all our walls are, like, uh, our walls are used. <laughs> I mean, we have just a little house and 
So there's not like a nice big wall space and we don't have like sliding door closets or anything. That would be a good place for, for a design wall too. I've seen people do that. Just um, cover your sliding wall, sliding door with, with some flannel or cotton batting. You took over the dining area. Oh, you want the walls too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of what my husband thought when I put up, or he, he helped me put up this, um, the wall next to me here with all the scissors and, and everything on. <laughs> it's like, let's, let's screw another uh, non-kitchen thing into the wall. I'm not sure he was wild about that. Taking over the little tiny dining room. But yeah, it would be nice to have a wall that I can just put stuff on and then I wouldn't have to bend over on the floor or anything like that, but oh well. If I do it on the floor, then it gets done faster. I'm thinking at least, ooh, I got a little, caught the, caught the corner in the machine a little bit there. Oh, you lay it down on the bed, well, that makes sense. Then you're up a little higher, which is good. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to that, just being on the floor again. And, you know, we talked about different ways to quilt or to sandwich the quilt, too, where I wouldn't have to do it on the floor. But I don't think I really have a table or a wall big enough to do the other ways of sandwiching the quilt. So I don't know. I think I'll just be on the floor again, which is also barely big enough. <laughs> for uh, to do that, so <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. We'll eventually get there. I think I might order some cotton or like a cotton blend fabric though, just because, yeah, from what, from what Krista was saying yesterday and from um, some other stuff that I've read, Cotton is good for free motion quilting because it kind of grabs it grabs both the top and bottom sheet a little bit more. So when you're moving it around, it it wants to hold itself together. So so I'm kind of thinking I should maybe just for that sake order some some um, batting, some cotton batting. Oh yeah, I could use an ironing board to extend the table a little bit. Yeah, so when we start quilting, I do have another another leaf in this table, so I could pull that leaf out and then just put it back um, in the evening when we're done. So maybe I can do that just to make the table a little bit bigger, but oh, uh, this, this table is way too small to do, to have, you know, a whole quilt on it. I mean, I have seen it, so I have watched people do it where you are doing it on a smaller quilt or a smaller table and you just center it, the quilt in it, and then you pin and then you move it around as you go. So I could try that instead of laying it all flat. That's just so different than what I usually do because I'm usually really making sure that all the sides are taped to the ground and, and nice and even and everything and I'm not quite sure how I would get that if I was just draping it over the table, but it might be worth a try. Just to try something different. So we'll see. But yeah, I think I'll, I'll have to look into some batting here soon. Um, not quite sure where I'll find that, but I'll do some research. Give the cotton a go. And I think it's not really 100% cotton. You roll on the insulated cover PCVC pipe. So that's what I'm thinking might be difficult to do, the PVC rolling, because I don't have a table that's wide enough for that. Like in theory, you roll up the entire length of the quilt, right? And then you, you roll it. I don't have a, I don't have anything big enough for that.
Like I don't have any, I don't have a big dining table or, or anything. I mean, my, my floor is barely big enough to, to fit a quilt. I actually couldn't do my, my jean quilt here. I, had a, I did that at my parents' house. The vinyl tablecloth with a flannel backing works for a movable design wall. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, the issue isn't movability for me either for a design wall. It's just the literal non-space of wall. <laughs> like, even if it was movable, there's no space. I, I had this thought. Um, you know, there's th those outside, they're not awnings, but they're like an outside rolled up curtain that you can pull down and it'll like shield shield, uh, um, you know, your patio from the sun or something. I was looking into those and I'm like, I could mount one of those on the inside above our current, uh, just above our windows in the, in the living room. And then I was thinking I could have like, you know, like what you're saying, like a vinyl thing with the cotton on the back or, or the, the flannel on the back. And it could roll up and down like a curtain and uh, you could probably even roll it up with the design, with the um, pieces on there. That's something I was thinking would be kind of interesting, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't do enough things that require a design wall yet, and I don't know. I didn't want to bother the husband with another thing that is quilting related that is taking over the entire house. <laughs> But if it got to the point that like, oh man, I'm, I just need this design wall. It's, it's becoming a problem that I don't have it. You know, I'm on the floor all the time and, and all that. Then maybe I would think into something like that, but um, I'm not there yet. I, I don't, I, you know, I'll, I'll throw these on the ground and, and I'll do it quick. I, I don't, I don't have any projects that I would leave up for a period of time while I'm working on another project or anything like that. So Right now it's not needed, but that's in the back of my head, like one of those roll-up um, curtains that I could replace. All right, and not, I wouldn't even replace the, you know, it is kind of like a bamboo, like tons of little bamboo pieces. I don't know if it's bamboo though, but like almost like little tiny slats, um, you know, and it blocks the sun and stuff, but I would probably just leave those slats and put, put some cotton batting on top of it, like attach it staple it to it or something somehow. So I don't know, that was, that was my plan. And then I was thinking, yeah, you could have two, like two on top of each other, like one mounted to the wall here and one mounted to the wall above. And then you could have like two different projects going at the same time, just depending on which one you unroll. <laughs> so I had this whole scheme going and then I'm like, yeah, I don't know. They were expensive and I didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, right now the only thing that's working is, is the floor, but that's okay. I can deal with the floor for now. Ah, we're, I'm looking at the end here coming up. So we're, we're getting there. I think we'll even finish uh, finish snipping these apart tonight. That'd be cool. Have our piles ready to go. You know, I actually have the cutting board out here too, so I could do that. Oh yeah, like maps, exactly, exactly like that, Gretchen. Like the maps that you pull down in a, in a school and roll back up, and you can have different different maps. Oh yeah, or like a, a movie screen, exactly like that. So that's what I was looking for. I was looking for, man, there's gotta be some hardware. Cause I don't need the whole screen. I just need like the rod with the hardware that, you know, stays in place and locks in place and can hold some weight and, you know, goes up and down when you want it to. So I was kind of looking for that hardware. And then I just went down to a hardware rabbit hole and I don't know, gave up a little.
actually, if I remember, you know, this is a little while ago, but I think there's actually a company uh, that makes these out of wood. And I think they actually did have a double one so you could pull it down and, and back up. I think it might have been for displaying fabric, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a design wall. So, oops, sorry guys, I, I hit you. Um, so, yeah, I think there is a company that has made something similar, but they're all wood and, I don't know, they're pretty expensive and stuff too, but I thought it was kind of neat. They're, they're filling, they're filling a need, like, <laughs> they're, they're talking to me. I don't have the space for the design wall or even a removable design wall, but that one, which just comes down, it would go in front of my curtains, or not my curtains, they'd go in front of the two windows in the living room, but you know, in theory, I'd just roll it up and, and it'd be done. Oh, thanks, thanks, Patricia. Have a good night's sleep. One, two, three, four, five, six, only six left. Yay. Oh, you need a quilt frame that can do that. That uh, rolls up and rolls down. That'd be neat. Oh yeah, <laughs> I changed it up this week, uh, Gian. I um, I figured I'd go with the bright colors of of my quilt. Do some bright pink. Almost done. Bonds and Porter has a design wall. You think there's, oh, metal that one that you can put together. Yeah, so, so to me, the whole point of a design wall is that I can have it up there and I can contemplate it and, and look at it for a while. So the idea of like removing it right away and having to take it down and stuff kind of defeats the, my purposes of having a, of what they would be for to have a design wall. It would almost be kind of like storage for me. Like you're storing a project on the wall <laughs> um, and then you can look at it and and stuff, but I don't know. So I like the idea that it's like a curtain that can come down and up, but if it's just, I can remove the wall and only use it when I need it, then, you know, that's not as much of why I would want one. All right, this is the last one. Sorry, we're shaking a lot tonight too. I'm trying to sew slower. All right, I'm gonna just run it over my ender here again and that is it turn that off snip these away okay so here is the pile <laughs> the pile behind me here there's so much oh there's my splendid sampler quilt in the in the corner over here just hanging out waiting for me to do the border but all right so let's let's give this a try so i wanted to do that um that idea of I, I've just taken a uh, a spool of thread and it, this one has a smaller th hole than the orofill and then I took my my uh, seam ripper and I'm just gonna stick it in there like that and I'm gonna set it here and you know the idea is you know now we have to snip all these apart and instead of using my scissors and snipping both of those like that the idea is that I can just oop that's gonna be a problem I can just snip on top like this and and that's easier and you know what I think that was actually a little bit easier so let's see if I can get into a rhythm actually I think I can turn it on its side and, and snip both at the same time yeah so I'm gonna just make a pile here oh man yep this is slick I recommend it this this is slick the little seam ripper actually I think if I had a little like dab of um, tape or something, having that taped to the surface would be even better. I wonder if I have like a little rubber guy that it can sit on. Yeah, I don't think so. 
But yeah, if this stayed in its spot, that would be even better. But yeah, so one of the other things I'm doing as I do this is I'm setting it. I want to, I always try and keep, when I do similar things, I always try to keep everything in the same place. So I'm, I'm doing it where the pattern side is up and I'm keeping that diagonal in its place because, oops, ouch. Then, then uh, um, when I grab at them later, they'll all be similar. All right, so I think I'm, I'm just trying to get good hand positions for this. And I think I've doing it sideways like this is a little easier. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to think like a, a factory that's trying to maximize thing. What's, what's the least amount of movement I have to do to be the same every single time? I always kind of like figuring that stuff out. So I think we're kind of good here. I'm coming in on the side, getting both threads at once and then just laying on the pile right there. Oh man, this is slick. Okay, I can see why people people splurge on that little little uh, seam ripper. There's a device that does this. It's just like a little thing that sits on your economy of motion, exactly. Uh, it just sits on your, I think it has a bigger base. It sits on the, the um, your table though, and it does basically the same thing. It has a little snippers in it, or a little blade. And I always thought, man, that's just so weird when you can just, just snip it, you know? But I gotta say, this is pretty slick. Oops, missed one. Oh. Smarter, not harder, there you go. Always trying to find those little economy of movement things. Smarter, not harder, yeah, exactly. Try and do that with everything. <laughs> It's always kind of in the in the back of my back of my head. How can the, how can I make this just a little easier? Sunflower quilts makes one. Oh, okay, so they might be the the makers of those little doohickeys. But yeah, this is slick. Just um, doing both at once too. Oh, I missed both. You know, because we have the we have the two threads. But I'm catching by going vertically like that. I can get both of them. So yeah, I think we can get a little faster with this. So then after we do this, that's when I'm gonna split these into two piles. Because remember, I need, I need the ones that go to the left ultimately and the ones that go to the right. And I just wanna divide it in half so I make sure that I'm doing exactly half of both of those things. Oh man, I'm getting my, my systems a little off. So uh, that will be the next step. And then, then I'll cut them apart and we can start opening them up and see what our, see what our half square triangles look like. You've come out really long way and are about messing up the kitchen sewing I learned. Oh, you're much happier cleaning up as you go. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll just, uh, you know, I, I'm in a super small space and it's like a shared space too. So I, I try and keep it kind of clean. Although when I get in the middle of projects here, sometimes it gets a little out of hand. But then on the weekend, it, it drives me nuts enough that I usually clean it up. Ooh, we're all twisted here. There we go. I'm totally gonna do this again though. This little seam ripper in the in the um, spool of thread thing. This worked pretty slick. Yeah, we're still gonna be here for a while though. And <laughs> now that I'm I'm just I'm like, ooh, we're gonna be done with this quick. But then I just looked up at my pile and. It's gigantic still. But we did get a lot, um, got these chain pieced today a lot faster than I thought we would. So I'm excited about that.
Oh man, I can't wait to see a pile of chevrons. Actually, now that we're this far, I'm like, wow, we're, we're almost done with this quilt. I know that each step takes a long time though, because we have to do it for every single block. Oh, the uh, life-changing magic of tidying up book. Yeah, I think we talked about that a lot last year because <laughs> I, <clears throat> I had read that. And what I like is the idea, and this is kind of why I'm using the fabrics too now that I think about it. I, what I liked about it was the idea of that even though if you get rid of something that it just doesn't work for you and, you know, it doesn't bring you joy. <laughs> You know, it doesn't fit or you it doesn't have a good memory around it or whatever. You can, I like the idea that you're actually honoring the item by giving it to someone else. And I, I, I like the idea that, you know, it'll at least be going to someone else. And, you know, I think that that helped me get comfortable with using up my fabrics that, that... I've been hoarding forever, and these are, are some of them, you know, fabrics that I've had on my shelf for, you know, 10 plus years, just because they were too pretty to cut in, or fat quarter bundles that I didn't even ever take apart because they were too pretty uh, in a fat quarter bundle. Uh, but I feel like now by using them, I'm, I'm honoring the fabric a lot more than if they were just being stored. So I kind of feel that way. So when I get rid of clothing and, and stuff like that, I just feel like, you know what, this is gonna, this is gonna help someone else more than me. And I'm saying thank you to the clothing for doing its job while I was here. And it's okay to let it go. But man, I haven't, I haven't done all the steps of that book or anything. I have gone through the, my clothing a few times, which has been nice, uh, but, Man, once they get to like personal items and that sort of thing, man, I don't know if I could ever get rid of all of my little tchotchkes and stuff. I don't know. That part freaks me out. And it's not, I mean, it is about getting rid of stuff, but it's more about, I think, just liking the stuff that you have <coughs> a little bit more. Just being in love with everything that you do have. All right, now the pile's looking looking a little smaller over there, so that's cool. Still big piles, but but not as big. I'm actually gonna move this out of the way. Start a start a fresh pile here. It's almost to the height of of my seam ripper. stuck. Oh man, your mom stuff too. Oh yeah, the um, fish museum and, and circus on her, her boxes, her sewing boxes, I think she had a seam ripper hold, holder on one of those or something. You're like, all oh, your stuff, that's your problem. Yeah, that's my problem too. Well, that's good. If you like all your stuff, then you're, then you're golden. Then you've accomplished the, uh, the point of that, that book, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. I like that idea, though, that, you know, the things that you own and you have around, it should all make you happy. Everything in your house should make you happy. And if it doesn't, then you gotta be like, yeah, do I really need this? And if it is something that you need, then you gotta like honor it as like, okay, this isn't the cutest thing in the world, but it does this job for me. And that makes it important and special in my life because it, it does this particular thing that helps me out, you know?
Oh, you're worried that one day you'll need it. Yeah. I don't know. Lately, I'm just getting so much, you know, excitement about using things up and and only having, you know, just what I need and stuff for, for something. You know, like using up fabric and, and all that, that it's been a little easier for me to get rid of things lately. Yeah, moving can help make those decisions, that's for sure. We moved a lot for a while, and oh god, every single time we, we got rid of so much stuff. Ugh, like I hate the thought of that, having to move again and having to go through all the stuff and pack it all up and ugh, that just sounds like the worst ever. Hi, Lorraine. All right, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe 40 or so of these left, if I had to estimate a pile. If there was a prize for guessing how much fabric was left in the pile, that's what I would guess. Oh man, you're going to make a move after 15 years. Oh, wow. Sending good vibes your way, Patty. That that sounds like like a job for sure. Yeah, I feel like I want to preemptively <laughs> go through stuff for that. You know, a lot of our stuff, you know, we, we went through old winter coats and uh, uh, things like that. And I was just going to bring them to the Value Village by us, which is like a thrift store. And then we're like, oh, well, we could try. What if we started an eBay shop or something and, and start putting stuff on there? So instead of just having it out of the house right away, now they're in bins in the basement and uh, it's just like, oh man, we still just have this stuff here and we haven't, haven't done anything with it yet. So I don't know, some weekend we're going to have to make that a mission. <laughs> we'll see. Ah, fabric's going with you. Good, good, uh, good reasoning, Patty. The essentials. Oh man, that would be sad. To have to offload a bunch of fabric. Oh man, okay, I'm thinking I was wrong with 40 left. They just keep coming. <laughs> Maybe it was more like 100. <laughs> uh, the pile is definitely smaller than before though, so that's something. Yeah, I'm totally digging this uh, this invention too. Oh man, three sewing machines. Sometimes you just need all three though. Different projects on them, or they have different uses. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that'd be, that'd be tough if I had to get rid of a sewing machine. All right, moving this pile again. It's getting too big. Too big again. Wow, this stack sewn together is so much bigger than the two piles of fabric on their own. The pile of um, pattern and the pile of um, solids. Oh yeah, that's right. So I am gonna, I do want to separate these randomly. So maybe I should, I should stir, stir them up in a big pile before I divide them up. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. I wanted to make it super random. I mean, in theory, it might be random anyway. But yeah, I think, oh, geez, now I'm getting finicky. <laughs> you know, as I'm talking about stirring these all up, I'm, I'm like making them all in order again. <laughs> it's just silly. So yeah, you're right. I think I will. Um, 
I will kind of just throw these in a pile and start grabbing and, and then, you know, to divide them up. Oh, Tracy, this is working super well. I, I've never done this before, but um, yeah, we just put that seam ripper in here and I'm actually, I'm actually able to cut both threads at once, which is working out really well. So I don't know how I'll make a pile of these though, because I don't want, I don't want to fray the edges too much either. Ugh, I'm caught again on the table. Hey, we're to the purples. That means we're towards the end. I think there's only 32 or so purples or maybe just 31. Oops, stabbed myself again. Yeah, actually, um, it's almost 9.30 already, so I think we'll finish snipping through these and we'll divide them up tomorrow and start cutting them after we divide them tomorrow. So next up, we, we cut along that diagonal line after, we, after I divide them in, in my two piles that I want to keep separate. But yeah, we're getting there. Oh man, you're in the process of moving your, your parents after 48 years, oh my gosh. Oh, that might be kind of fun. S your search for treasures in there. But yeah, the idea of moving all that. Oh yeah, I don't want, I don't want things to fray. Did I say something goofy? Well, that's likely. <laughs> I can see the end. I do think this purple is still really pretty with the red. Oops. Got away from me. There, we have about 10 more, so. And we'll have a nice big stack of these. Some got a little twisted, but we can just snip them apart and they're good to go. Three more. All right, and just the little end on there, and we are done. So that uh, little uh, deal here worked super duper well. Could definitely see using that again for sure. Oh, they they uh, married at first sight. All right, so here we go. Here is my stack it got definitely got bigger with them all sewn together but look I'm so excited it's gonna be so fun uh, when we cut these apart and start start pressing them open like we're gonna have so many fun little half square triangles here so all right guys I am gonna flip you around we finished just at 9 30 isn't that funny just exactly an hour here so I'm gonna uh, flip you around and we'll get going for the evening Hey Glennis, so I'm not going to attempt to mix the colors evenly. I just I just don't think I'll ever have it be being that perfect. So even if like all the purples end up being in one direction and that's just how it ends up, I'm going to just be okay with that. I'm just going to keep it kind of random. So I do kind of want to mix these up, but I don't, yeah, I don't know quite how I would do that without them fraying. Uh, but we'll come up with something. I want to kind of randomly grab and, uh, you know, just grab with, maybe I'll just kind of spread them out and with both hands I'll just grab and then start making piles with, with both um, to, make, to make my two even piles. 
eh, something like that. We'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be as random as I can. If, if it's not so random when, when I'm done, then oh well. But yeah, then uh, we're on our way to making our little chevrons. I'm excited. That feels like we got a lot done by having it off the machine and we're, we're back to pressing and cutting and, and all that. So awesome. Uh, I'll get this up on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube when I'm done here tonight. So if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, then you should get an email when I have uh, the when the, the things live so you can uh, check that out and I'll put them in a paper bag and pick out randomly oh that'd be kind of fun yeah I think that probably wouldn't hurt I, I don't think that would fray the edges very much yeah maybe I have a really big bowl or something yeah that'll be fun we'll do that tomorrow and we'll start start cutting on the diagonal line and get our our little pairs and then we got to keep the pairs together too so uh, we got to be careful about that so all right I will uh, see you guys tomorrow. It's Thursday already tomorrow. That's kind of crazy. Weeks are flying by. Uh, but I will see you guys then. So have a great night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.